Good morning, Shirley. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Wow, it is August the 2nd. Can you believe that? Whew, where is this year going? <laughs> oh my, it's good to be with you though today. And uh, love that song, Come and Dine. Come and Dine. Yesterday we had communion at the uh, the end of our worship service. And, and I want to thank all of you who came out to uh, to be with us for worship yesterday. I um, heard a man say that, uh, a pastor, I believe it was, that said that uh, the church is forever changed by COVID-19 and that the church attendance will never get back to, to what it was. And, and I hope we can prove him wrong. You know, we need to be uh, when we can and, and uh, if we're healthy and, 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 of course, more when the numbers go down. But we need to be back in church because it is so good to to see your face in church. And, and I love it that you're with me here, but I'm staring at a camera right now and, um, and you're staring at a screen. So um, it's just not the same, is it? But I'm thankful that you're here. Uh, I want to share with you this morning from Psalm chapter 86. Psalm 86, we're going to read the whole chapter, about 14, 15 verses. So listen to the word of the Lord this morning. It begins, bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, um, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good and ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. No pagan god is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. All the nations you made will come and bow before you, Lord. They will praise your holy name. For you are great and perform wonderful deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. With all my heart, I will praise you. O oh, Lord, my God, I will give glory to your name forever. For you love, for your love for me is very great. You've rescued me from the depths of death. O oh, God, insolent people rise up against me. A violent gang is trying to kill me. You mean nothing to them, but you, O oh Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Look down and have mercy on me. Give me your strength. Give strength to your servant. Save me, the son of your servant. Send me a sign of your favor. Then those who hate me will be put to shame. For you, O Lord, help and comfort me. It's the word of God for the people of God this morning. Thanks be to God. Hey, this week, at least through Thursday, I'm not sure about Friday yet, but at least through Thursday, I want to take a look at the 86th Psalm. According to the Bible, this Psalm was written by King David, and he was in great danger. He's begging God to save him from a group of thugs who are trying to kill him. And, and I love the desperation in verse one. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Folks, there's an honest prayer, isn't it? No, no showy language here, uh, uh, not, not saying it so other people can hear. It's one of those prayers, that I, I, and I love to describe them this way, where we get desperate. So we run into our bedroom, we hit our knees. As soon as we get to the door, we skid across the carpet on our knees to the edge of the bed, and we bow down and we say, God, help me. <laughs> That's the desperation in David's voice. That's the, the real prayer. They're trying to kill me. Help me, be merciful, be loving, protect me, save me, help me, oh God. Then there's something sort of strange that happens. I don't know if you caught it, <clears throat> but a few verses down in, um, in verse five, David says, 
Oh, Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. And I thought to myself, why would he do that? I mean, why would he stop in the middle of all this, this pleading for help and say, Lord, you're a good God? <laughs> well, if you're human, and and I'm betting you are, uh, you know this thing called guilt. I'm going to fly it. It's driving me crazy today. Uh, but you know of this this thing called guilt. As a matter of fact, you probably have a, a pretty close relationship with it. Uh, I know I do. Uh, some of that relationship was taught to us by our parents and grandparents. Uh, some really knew how to put guilt trips upon us. But to be honest, uh, most of it is from the prevenient grace of God that we're born with. You know, that portion of the Holy Spirit within us, even before we turn to God through Christ Jesus, that says inwardly to us, hey, you've, you've messed up. You've messed up. So we find that when we're in deep despair and, and in need, like David was here, and we pray, there's this, this feeling lurking deep within us that, that we're unworthy to come before the throne of God. We're unworthy to, to, to pray and to ask God for anything. I mean, we think to ourselves, why, why should God listen to me? I mean, who am I among all the peoples of the earth? Well, the answer is that God loves us so much that he listens to us even though we really don't deserve his attention. God is a good God, and he is ready to forgive, just like verse 5 says. You're a good God, so good, ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love to all who ask for help. So we need to acknowledge God's goodness, God's holiness. We also need to acknowledge our own sin. And we need to do this really before we can expect him to act on our behalf. You know, so many times when we pray, our, our prayers begin like a, a Christmas list or a wish list. We need to praise God first. And that Acts model of prayer that, that I shared in, in a sermon not too many Sundays ago, back earlier in the summer, the first step, the letter A in the word Acts was what? Adoration. Adoration. We call God who he is. We praise God. Then there's confession. <laughs> you know, adoration and confession. That's what we're talking about here. Acknowledging the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the holiness of God, the purity of God, and then confessing our sins. And then thanksgiving that he's forgiven those sins. And then supplication. Then our needs. See, they come last. So we need to, to acknowledge his, his greatness. We need to confess our sins. We, we need to give him thanksgiving before we can expect him to act on our behalf. You know, when you pray, do you ever get the feeling that God's not listening? Another thing that I've said so often is there are times when I pray, when I feel like that my prayers just roll off my lips, crawl over in the corner and die. You know, I feel like sometimes God's not hearing, that they're not reaching God. The problem is we, and, and I just did it. We, we go reaching God and we look up. Well, really, we should be saying it's reaching God in me. God's not there. He's here for the Christian. He's in us. But if we ever get that feeling that God's not listening, then stop and, and let's take a moment to examine ourselves. Let's take a moment to look into our hearts and see if there is any sin there. Anything we haven't confessed to God and asked forgiveness for. If there is, then let's do that. Let's confess our sins to him and ask for his forgiveness. Then, as the New Testament says, the apostle says, we can enter boldly. We can enter with confidence before the throne of grace and obtain help in time of need. We can have a greater relationship with him. God wants us to come to him when we have needs. He wants us to come to him for protection, for mercy, for grace, for forgiveness. We have to come with a clean heart. But he also wants to provide that for us as well. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then supplication. God hears our prayers. He hears your prayers. Let's pray. 
Father, we do praise you, Lord. We, we, Lord, you are a good God. You alone, as David wrote, you're above all the other gods of the earth because there are no other gods except the man-made ones. But Lord, you are the, the all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-forgiving God to those who will come to you. And Father, we do confess our sins. We know we've sinned and fallen short of the glory. And maybe there are specific ones this morning that we need to confess. And if so, Holy Spirit, show us through that prevenient grace, through that grace of God that lives within us. And forgive us, we pray. And I thank you that we are forgiven. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and died on that cross for my sins. So, Lord, hear our prayers. Meet our needs. Give us mercy. Give us protection. Give us grace. Give us your provision, O oh God. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Again, thank you for being with me this morning. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to continue looking at this psalm, Psalm 86. Hope you can join me. God loves you. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.